the experience. In, t in terms of the other little piece of what you said about it, dealing with the level that they are at, um, which is which I'm it's like someone who's just come in off a computer who doesn't have a lot of experience who hasn't spent years looking for where their tail is, right? Yeah, my teacher Bonnie says they're beginners, they're inexperienced, they're not stupid. Which is not that you're saying they're stupid, but at all. <laughs> but she said that in response to someone else, um, who was saying beginners can't get this, and mm -hmm, that it's too com it's too complicated for beginners, or something like that. And one of my experiences, and my own experience, as a, someone who was a dancer and who knew a lot of movement stuff or thought I knew a lot of stuff before I started learning um, before I started learning more I, I, I had so much to unlearn that I thought I knew about it that I've ex that I a lot of the people who I see who have a lot of experience actually have a hard time taking in new information because we myself included, we think we know it already. And so I only take in the part that matches what I already know. And I have had, now there are beginners who get really confused about where things are in their body, for sure. And I have to be really articulate because it's a, something they might not ever have thought of. But sometimes the beginners don't have as many obstructions to learning as more experienced people do. Um, and I can remember coming back from one summer of studying uh, body-mind centering and we'd been working on the cranial rhythm and the cranial cerebral spinal fluid and how it moved and I had been in tears for three of the six weeks I was there because I couldn't feel this thing because I was trying so hard. And I came home and I told my roommate who was not a mover, um, I was like, I can't, I can't get this thing. And she, and she was telling her about it. And I'm like, there's this fluid in the brain, and the bones shift, and this fluid goes down to the. And she, she listened to me, and she went, hmm. Oh yeah, I got it. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. And I was like, oh, because she didn't know. She like, I said I got it, but I didn't say, oh, you won't be able to get this or anything. So I'm curious when I start with novices, with beginners, sometimes I try out like, you know, where does that go in your body? Can you feel that go to your tail? And maybe it's worth asking. And maybe it's not. And maybe that's not what you want to do. Um, and it's, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious in myself of assuming that if someone has never been exposed to it before, that it won't be there for them. And it became a big, it was really a big learning for me to, to, to start saying more often, this is already in there. Because someone said to me once, we were like looking for the tail, and they were like, I can't find my tail, I can't find my tail, I don't have a tail. And I was like, okay, wait, wait, wait. And, and we had both gotten into so much trying to find something that it was like, stop, you do have a tail. That you can't feel it is something about what, what we're doing or how we've looked for it. But it's there. All of these things, they're there. You ha I have a cranial rhythm. I might not be able to feel it, but it's there. Right? And then there's the things I get in the way of feeling or not. So, um, yeah. So having said all of that, there might be times when you start from your shoulders to talk to someone, but then there are ways around our tone as a teacher around doing that, that, that might allow more things to arise than we expect. Now, if you're working with someone who thinks they already know everything and has a lot of experience, then that's really hard. <laughs> um, that's when you really need the party tricks to come out and reveal things. <laughs>